Hey, Rivermont family, Pastor Brett here with today's devotional. Uh, We're concluding our examination of the Apostles' Creed today, and our prayer has been that God would cause this creed to bring new meaning and joy in our life together as we recite it in worship. Now, next week, the pastors are going to provide devotionals that will encourage us all in this election season to keep our eyes on Jesus. And then following that, we look to begin a new series on the Lord's Prayer. So do be on the lookout for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this uh, devotional series, I encourage you to do that by pressing the subscribe button on your page. Well, the last phrase of the Apostles' Creed is a belief in the life everlasting. This is the Christian's hope. This is God's future grace bestowed upon all who call upon the name of Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. For Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have life eternal, life everlasting. That's the promised gift to us who believe. But what exactly are we getting? Well, certainly not an eternity of the world we're living in now, a world that is subject to decay where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, a world of hunger and thirst, of sickness, loneliness, and imprisonment. None of us would want such an existence beyond this lifetime. No, the life everlasting is about fulfilling the purpose for which man was made. Do you remember the Westminster Catechism question number one? It is to glorify God and to do what? To enjoy him forever. How long? Forever. For it will take an eternity to enjoy God and his presence. And yet that begs a question, doesn't it? What will it mean for us to enjoy God? Does that mean the only thing we will do in eternity is worship God? Will it be just a never-ending worship service? I remember thinking that as a teenager and being a little worried about that. I honestly wondered if that sounded more like a description of hell than of heaven. Well, that's because I didn't particularly enjoy Sunday worship as a teenager. Well, in one sense, the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. We will worship the Lord as we sing his praises, but we will not only worship the Lord with our voices in singing, we will worship him with our hands as we work. We will worship him with our minds as we create beautiful works of art and architecture. We will worship him with our hearts as we communicate with our fellow saints. We will worship him with our eyes as we behold the beauty of a redeemed and restored creation. All of these things and more will cause us to worship the Lord and glorify him. Why? Because the veil that has prevented us from beholding the glory of God will fully and finally be removed. We who were made in his image to worship him in these ways will no longer be limited, but will no longer be frustrated by the presence, the power, or the penalty of sin anymore. Jesus has made sure of that through his life, death, and resurrection. We will be free to glorify him and enjoy him forever. All of the desires that we have felt and sought fulfillment for have always come up short in some way. And that is attributed to something C.S. Lewis has famously said in his book, Mere Christianity. He said that if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. If none of my earthly pleasures satisfy it, that does not prove that the universe is a fraud. Probably earthly pleasures were never meant to satisfy it, but only to arouse it, to suggest the real thing. What is that real thing? Life eternal with our God, which means full satisfaction of our desires. Not the faint or fleeting hint that we experience in this life. No, the full satisfaction of our desires find their absolute fulfillment in him. And yet I have saved the best for last. For life everlasting means that we will be with God and he will be with us. We will be in his presence and his presence will not terrify us, but it will undo us. We will be undone as we behold his beauty, his radiance, his glory, and most of all, his presence with us. This is our certain hope. This is our future home with God. And as Lewis goes on to say, 
I must keep alive in myself the desire for my true country, which I shall not find until after death. I must never let it get snowed under or turned aside. I must make it the main object of life to press on to that other country and to help others do the same. May this be our life's goal until the Lord Jesus comes again. And to that we say, amen. Let's pray. Lord, that is our simple prayer this day. For we long to be with you. We long to dwell with you as your people and for you to be our God. And so we pray as all saints who have prayed before us, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Well, if you haven't already done so, we do encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can keep receiving these devotionals and other content that we're producing here at Rivermont. Until we see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace both now and forevermore. Amen.